hello all so today our topic is regarding biology in human welfare so what are the contents we are going to see under this topic is one is blood circulation so the blood circulation is very important because blood is the very important medium for our body which carries the nutrients hormones enzymes as well as nitrogenous waste products ions minerals water everything will be there under blood circulation so the blood uh, circulation is been first discovered by william harvey and the next thing is we are going to see about health so what is health so health is nothing but a state of complete physical mental psychological and emotional as well as social well being it is not just absence of disease we have to be noted that i hope this is a very famous definition from who so a state of complete uh, physical mental physiological emotional and social well being we call it as health next so we have a genetical disorders also so health can be affected by genetics and uh, by communicable diseases by non communicable diseases at the same time and also because of various lifestyles like alcohol cigarette smoking sedentary life lifestyle all those things and next we are going to see about disease what is a disease okay so a disease is nothing but an abnormal condition that affects the body okay so it is not a normal for the uh, him uh, any body as it is an animal or a plant or anything what is a disease which is an abnormal functioning of the body and it is often like a medical condition in which it shows the signs and symptoms you will be having signs and symptoms for disease so what is sign so sign is nothing but what can you what you can able to see with your eyes is sign so symptoms what the patient or the person can able to feel himself we call it as symptoms okay for example sign uh, inflammation we can see for the inflammation right and uh, we can see for the temperature so we can see the sign of increase in temperature because we can feel the increase in temperature and we can see any cut bleeding all those things we can see the rashes we can examine and see the rashes symptoms such as pain you cannot uh, uh, like evaluate the pain which is subjective in nature because the person himself has to tell so how much he is getting pain and where he is getting pain and next let's see the different types of diseases one is uh, communicable diseases communicable diseases and other one is non communicable diseases what is this communicable so communicable are we otherwise call it as the the disease which can be communicable through vectors or through person to person so which can be transmittable actually so whatever the medium it can be from person to person or it can be from ticks mosquitoes like house flies those all will comes under communicable disease recently the covid 19 which is a communicable disease which is a pandemic and non communicable disease we cannot transfer from person to person or from through vectors or through anything that we call it as a non communicable disease so here so for communicable diseases you will be having a disease causing agents which we call it as pathogens so these are mainly mostly biological agents so they will be present in the host host organism and here you don't have uh, no pathogens will be there so which is like uh, chronic diseases like diabetes which is uh, non communicable cancer which is non communicable 
and uh, which leads to sometimes rapid death also for non communicable hypertension which is non communicable stroke non communicable and here you will see what is a pathogen okay so pathogen so what is the meaning of pathogen which is a microorganism it can be virus it can be viroids it can be prions it can be bacteria it can be fungus it can be protozoan whatever the thing which leads to the causative of signs and symptoms and the disease abnormality in the body we call it as pathogens and host what is a host in which the microorganisms will stay will act as a parasite we call it as host so let's see some common diseases like its disease uh, pathogen type and location okay so for uh, disease pathogen type whether it is bacteria or fungi or location to which it will affect to which area it will affect typhoid so typhoid is affected by salmonella typhi salmonella typhi and this is a bacterial infection and this will affect the intestine and we have the pneumonia so this is formed by uh, the two type of bacteria which is streptococcus pneumonia next haemophilus influenza this is also bacterial and it will affect the respiratory tract and next we'll go with malaria which is affected by a sporozoan in turn which is which comes under the kingdom protista that is plasmodium vivax plasmodium vivax which is again uh, protozoan uh, it will affect the liver as well as rbc next amebiasis so entamoeba histolytica so which is a protozoan again which comes under amoeboid it will affect the large intestine so the person will be infected uh, and showing the signs and symptoms of dysentery so the person will be having the dysentery and ascariasis so ascaris lumbricoides so this which is a nematode so you can get it through intestine and next filariasis filarial bronchospathy or ucheraria bancrofti so ucheraria bancrofti and which is again a nematode which is uh, comes under ascohelminthes this also this mainly affect the lymphatic system lymph nodes next uh, we have the plague yersinia pestis this is mainly by uh, bacteria so this is also intestine and uh, we have the diphtheria corinobacterium diphtheriae
and uh, there there also is also bacterial and we have the skin as well as mucous membrane aids this formed by hiv so aids is the disease hiv is the virus so which is viral it will affect the whole over immune system and next ringworms so which is formed by microsporum trichophyton and epidermophyton species epidermophyton species this is fungi so ringworm is fungi infection so this will affect the skin okay so these are some of the things we have to be noted okay so let's see uh, some of the other things regarding immunity okay what is immunity immunity is nothing but the body's defense mechanism so which is like uh, the ability of a host to fight against the disease or uh, defense to avoid the infection so it may be like uh, we don't want certain biological invasions into our body so those things will be cleared by certain phagocytic cells immunoglobulins so our body defense mechanism it's like a soldiers it's like uh, army to our body so immunity is broadly divided into two categories so let me explain you this innate immunity acquired immunity okay got it what is innate innate immunity is like non specific uh, it is not like specific to certain bacteria certain virus certain fungi or certain viroids so this immunity is to all for example uh, we have the wbc cells neutrophils basophils eosinophils uh, like lymphocytes all those things are non specific that, that is innate immunity next acquired immunity this immunity uh, we will be getting during our lifetime not from birth we get during the lifetime in acquired uh, again we have two categories one is active another one is passive so what is active and what is passive so and again uh, we have uh, active also we have two categories active natural active artificial so what is active so whatever whenever our body prepares the antibiotics or immunoglobulins or phagocytic cells that our body itself prepares then we call it as active immunity when our body don't prepares it we get it from uh, outside then we call it as passive so we don't get it uh, naturally we get it artificially we, are, we will be injecting from other things that we call it as a passive for example mother's milk so mother's milk is of passive uh, passively having immunity mother's milk It, which will be having iga antibodies in the mother milk so and the, the baby will become more immunity get more immunity because of iga antibodies which is present more in the colostrum as well as the mother milk this is a, and also plasma pheresis which is a kind of passive immunity next active immunity natural active immunity is like uh, for example we got acquired with some we accidentally got some disease like smallpox and uh, any other like uh, diphtheria pertussis tetanus so if we are getting immunity uh, which our body is creating immunity and fighting against those diseases and our body is immunized that then we call it as natural immunity artificially is like when you are getting vaccinated when we are getting vaccinated and getting immunity that we call it as artificial immunity okay so these are uh, different types of uh, immunity so which is actually based in this chapter so far and uh, 
Uh, we'll see uh, in in next coming things. We'll see certain related topics. I hope uh, you got some information regarding this video. So thank you very much.